Singapore remains one of the favored destinations of Filipino and international travelers, and there's a reason for that. And a huge part of it is the food. It's hard to determine where to start, so let me help you. I wanna show you the must-try restaurants and dishes in a certain food category. Today, it's all about noodles. Wow. <coughs> yeah, I need that beer. Singapore has a rich cultural heritage with a diverse population made up of Chinese, Malay, Indian, and other ethnic groups. Each of these communities has brought its own cuisine to the country, including various noodle dishes. We're gonna be eating so many noodles today, it's not even funny. Now we make our way to one of the oldest estates in Singapore, Ang Mo Kyo which was where the town council system was piloted and is now being used throughout the country. While there isn't much to see in the area, this noodle stall is worth the commute. When a stall has been running for over 60 years and only sells a handful of dishes, you know that their food is gonna be insane. What I love about Singapore, it's barely 12.30. All these places literally just opened and when they open, boom, massive lines. I'm looking for one specific one because I've been dying to try Mi Rebus. Ah, I think we found it. So usually when there's a line building up, it's a sign of good things to come. I actually don't know much about Muslim food, especially from this area, but I heard the Mi Rebus and Mi Soto and the satay is really delicious. So I'm lining up because the line's getting deeper and deeper and I'm really excited. First bite of noodles in Singapore, trying something completely different from what I've ever tasted before. Obviously, in this episode, we're still gonna explore kind of like the favorites, but I wanted to try something new just to start off. Rahim Muslim Food has been running since 1957 and only sells three dishes, mi rebus, mi soto, and satay. Mi means noodles and rebus means to blanch. So this is a blanched noodle dish with a thick sweet potato-based gravy sauce locally known as koa. What sets this stall apart is not only its six-year-old gravy recipe, but the signature satay sauce that they add to the dish. Can I do the mi rebus extra special? Yeah. What's inside? Noodle, chicken, uh, uh, what? and soup chicken. Oh, cool. Okay. I'll get one of those, please. Be one mi soto also. Yeah, thank you. So my shop name, Rahim Musifu, is my dad's one. Started within 1957. Yeah, it's from my grandfather. Actually, he is from uh, Indonesia. So he made his uh, girl here, so get married. My dad took over, and then slowly me, uh, the third generation like. This looks insane. The first one is our mi soto with bihun noodles and with soto ayam, so a massive chunk of chicken, as you can see here. Um, and it's a mix of bihun and the egg noodles, which I love kind of like that combination. Try the soup first. So I'm guessing there's a lot of turmeric in here. Mmm. It's like a deep, gingery, garlicky. It has some bean sprouts or some toge with the bihun, with the egg noodles. The chicken, which I'm guessing is poached, that is absolutely perfectly cooked. So tender, moist, juicy. And to me, this is kind of like a very foreign dish. Like there's a potato fritter in here, which I've never kind of seen in any soup Let's try that. Yum. That's like, I wouldn't even call that a fritter. It's more like a um, mashed potato that's been coated in some sort of crumbs and deep fried. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this. Let's go to the next one. This is the extra special Mi Rebus. It has an egg that's in there. It has some satay sauce, lots of chicken, and some noodles buried. Tons of chilies. And I love that we have some calamansi. Kind of reminds me of home. Let's try the gravy first. That is just thick and luscious. Whoa. And then let's see what treasures lie beneath. Whoa. Look at that. That is insane. Mm. How do this fried this? It Kind of reminds me of the, the heaviness of a Japanese curry in terms of sauce, but with a very significant amount of sugar and peanuts that makes it really come together. 
chicken, same chicken we had here, except here with a very different sauce and a nice boiled egg. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Let's get that chicken. Oof. Get myself sweating already. I'm a little scared about the chilies that are here. These are literally just fresh chilies. And my tolerance of chili, well documented, is not very high. Let's try it with the noodles. Whoa. Yep. That's a, that's a raw chili. But I think it makes a lot of sense with the sweetness that's in there. And then they, they gave us extra chili. Mmm. That is intense. Thank God for my sweet lime juice. Wow. Next, a stir-fried noodle dish made with flat rice noodles, shrimp, bean sprouts, Chinese sausage, egg, and a blend of sauces and spices. This dish is cooked in a wok over high heat, giving it a smoky flavor and a slightly charred texture. With only 32 stalls, Zion Riverside Food Center is among the smallest hawker centers, but it is home to some of Singapore's gems. With the amount of skill, time, and effort it requires to cook one serving, many young hawkers shy away from selling this and instead pursue more profitable ones like chicken rice. Char, meaning stir-fried, and kuei chou, meaning flat rice noodles, originated from Hokkien farmers and fishermen who made this dish from pork lard and leftover ingredients and sold it as a street food for additional income. While the ingredients are cheap, the flavor owes itself to the cooking skills of the hawker, who fries each serving individually in order to thoroughly flavor the dish, making it hard to mass produce. We're here on Zion Road and, oh my God. It's like two minutes till opening and this place is already packed. So I guess when there are lines, it means good things here. Still here. I can already smell that kind of like charcoal flavor in the air and it's making me really hungry. So if you have regulars lining up 30 minutes before service, you know you're doing something right. I've been really craving a char kway chow and this one looks amazing. Finally got through the line, got my own dish. Really? I can understand why that line's out there. I've made this dish at home and it's deceptively very hard to do. It seems simple because it's a stir fry. We really need that wok hei. Wok hei in Chinese, I think, means the breath of the wok. So the wok flavor has to kiss the dish, basically. And you need that charcoal smokiness. And with the chili, it works really well. The other thing that's tough is you want that char that's on there, but you don't want to break the noodles. So there's almost an art to making sure that you're cooking the noodles properly and then not overcooking them on the wok when you're finishing the dish. And this just has the right amount of smokiness, sweetness, and spice. And it's absolutely loaded with ingredients. Wow. This has to be one of the best I've had, for sure. If you're looking for a really good track with down, Zion Road's the place to be. If you don't have much time in Singapore and you're looking for the diverse range of all the different dishes you might want to try, coming in Golden Mile is probably one of the best things you can do. They have absolutely everything over three floors and the smells coming out of this place are just making my mouth water and getting me really hungry. I'm here to try to look for one of the newest, probably one of the best Hokkien Mee spots. And yeah, I mean, I'm all noodled out already, but good things to come. Some anecdotes say Hokkien Mee began back in the 1880s. Some say it came after World War II. Bottom line of these origin stories is that the dish was created by Hokkien immigrants who started selling these along Rochor Road, hence its early name, Rochor Mee. Yu Fu Hokkien Mee could be the best new Hokkien Mee in Singapore. Andre started making Hokkien Mee at 14 when his dad used to run a stall. Everything from the chili to the lard is homemade. The broth brings everything together and is cooked down for eight hours. A mix of shrimp heads, shells, pork bones, and skin make it an umami bomb that steeps through the delicate noodles. That elusive wok hei smoke is crucial to the dish and really comes through. It's then generously topped with prawns, clemency, crispy lard, squid, and octopus. So Andre back there, we asked him if we could interview him, and all of a sudden, he got a ton of people kind of lining up. It is 5.45, so I think the dinner service is about to start. He's a young guy, um, and it's great to see kind of like second generation hawkers coming in. Really interesting story where 
He was inspired by his father to put up this stall, and working with him is his wife, who quit her full-time job to join him and help him tend shop, which is really nice to see, kind of like young blood in the hawker scene. And the speed at which this man works is absolutely amazing. So I think this is gonna be absolutely beautiful. It's kind of like on the drier side of the hook in me, but it looks so creamy. So the broth that he has in there is probably really, really intense and creamy. And it's still piping hot. That has got to be honestly, probably one of the best bites of food I've had. Oh my God, if I wasn't already so full, I would destroy all of this. It's sweet, savory, smoky. These little pieces of fork rind, just add that decadence to it. This is the first recipe I've tried here that I really want to learn how to make at home. If you're in Singapore and you're looking for good noodles, you need to try this place out. Solid. When in Singapore, it gets really easy to be overwhelmed with all the choices that you have in hawker centers. But let's not forget there's a really vibrant, young kind of restaurateur industry here. And I think modern Singaporean food is something that we should definitely showcase and talk about. So right now I'm at the Kong Si and I can't wait to try some of their dishes. The Kong Si finds its home in Jemil Lane between Club Street and Amoy Street. It's a metropolitan district where you can find classy and hip restaurants and bars. Chef Willing Lo created the menu. He is best known as the founder and head chef of Wild Rocket, a restaurant that specializes in modern Singaporean cuisine. Willing Lo has gained recognition for his innovative approach to traditional dishes, combining local ingredients with global flavors and cooking techniques to create unique and delicious dishes. We sat down with one of his partners who brews the beers that are served through the food. Hi, I'm Kevin Gan. I'm one of the founder of the Kongsi in Singapore. The Kongsi essentially is a modern Singaporean izakaya. So I think we focus a lot on all things Singaporean. Uh, place was founded by a couple of us that are involved in the craft beer industry. So we make craft beer for a living and we always thought that it's a cool idea to have a place that obviously serves our beer and also uh, serves out amazing local Singaporean food. I was actually pretty sad when I was thinking of I was going to come here to Singapore and not have laksa. So I'm super happy that it's here and it looks really different from the laksas that I'm used to. But I'm going to try the satay first because it looks so beautiful. They were saying Iberico pork, which is like really probably one of the best porks in the world with a Javanese peanut satay, pineapple salsa that's on there. Mmm, so juicy perfectly charred. That sauce, I want to steal it from all the other satay sticks. It is thick, chunky, and really intense in terms of flavor. That is a really good bite of food. I'm not gonna lie, most of the time when I am in Singapore, you'll either find me in hawker centers or more kind of like, um, I mean, Western concepts and everything. I haven't really delved much into modern Singaporean food, but I'm now kind of, <coughs> Yeah, I need that beer. Thank you. <laughs> Craft beer came to save the day with that spice. Wow. Laksa. Mmm. There's massive chunks of crab in there. It's a very clean bowl. Like I've had laksa that's kind of like all over the place. Here you can really taste all the individual flavors that the chef really wanted to bring out. I understand why it's important to keep evolving a cuisine and keeping it really authentic in terms of flavor, but getting creative with the ingredients that you're using. So the flavor of Singaporean cuisine is definitely in here, but just the ingredients are kind of like top notch. The broth is extra creamy. If you're watching this wondering how I can heat so much in each episode, I'm wondering the exact same thing. It's a lot of food, but it really helps me kind of understand all the different flavors to play with and maybe get inspired in my own cooking. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna finish this bowl.
make sure to catch all our other episodes about the great food that you can find around Singapore.